Let's talk about NFTs. This technology has exploded into mainstream media, bringing in millions of users' exposure to this new asset class. People say this industry is just like the internet back in the late 1990s when it was gaining initial adoption. And what about this internet thing? Do you, do you know anything about that? The same way I did in 1994 when I saw the internet. But can this really be the next internet? You've probably seen the pictures of monkeys or pixelated punks taking over celebrity display pictures. But what is this hype all about? Well, here's a quick 30 second rundown of how this technology works. NFTs stand for non-fungible tokens, which essentially is an asset with a unique identification code that leverages the blockchain to prove ownership of this asset. NFTs need to be created using a smart contract, which is a blockchain feature not actually offered by Bitcoin. Ethereum is the biggest cryptocurrency used for NFTs, but NFTs exist on other cryptocurrency networks but majority of NFT traffic happens on the Ethereum blockchain. Let's look at an example of this technology at work. The Mona Lisa, one of the most famous paintings in our history, has been historically on display at the Louvre Museum in Paris. What if they swapped it out for a completely identical copy? It would take an industry expert to uncover the difference between a fake and the real Mona Lisa. But with NFT technology, a fake can be quickly identified by simply checking the blockchain. It wouldn't take an expert to do this either. Anyone theoretically can check the authenticity at any moment. Although NFTs commonly intersect with art, the technology has so many useful applications past this function. It can theoretically be used in any transfer of assets, doing so more efficiently than common practices where you need to pay bankers, lawyers, and agencies tens of thousands of dollars just to perform the same function. But it doesn't matter how revolutionary this technology is, there's still big, massive underlying problems facing NFTs today. Majority of NFT transactions are currently digital art. People talk about how they've entered this space because they're highly interested in the art they're buying. But deeply tainted in the back of their minds is that small glimmer of a new opportunity to make money. Maybe a small portion of people have entered the space because of their hobby as an art collector, but it has become more and more apparent that the dominating large majority of people in the NFT industry are solely entering the space with the hopes and dreams of making hundreds of thousands of dollars like they've heard other people are doing on the internet. Although NFTs have changed thousands of lives for the better, it's getting increasingly alarming how disconnected people are with this technology, causing lasting, rooted damage in people's lives and the industry as a whole. When buying an NFT, there is essentially two phases of any NFT project where you can make your purchase. The first phase is called minting a project which means you are the first holder of this NFT, buying it directly from the project owner on launch day. When you receive the NFT after a mint, you don't actually get the art right away. The art is still hidden until the project owners reveal the art once all the NFTs are sold, AKA minted. The second phase is the secondary market, which is where you buy after the initial mint of the collection from another investor not the project owners. Now imagine you were new to the NFT space, which is pretty much what majority of NFT community members are today. And a promotion from a big celebrity you've been following on Instagram starts talking about their new amazing NFT collection launching within the next few days. You've been following this person for quite some time and have developed a certain level of trust with this celebrity. So you decide to check out the project this so-called celebrity starts promising their audience the sky and the moon, talking about meetups, signed gifts, concerts, special celebrity guests, huge brand deals, big giveaways, one-on-ones, life coaching, and promising their biggest fans that this NFT project will be their new long-term business and it will change everyone's lives financially. You don't wanna miss out on this golden opportunity so you decide to buy in because of the array of enticing perks and the trust you've already pre-built with this influencer. 
they finally sell out the project, making millions of dollars, and they go ghost, breaking all their promises to investors. You lose thousands of dollars, and the celebrity runs away with millions of dollars without having to lift a finger. It's hard to imagine people doing this, but it happens way more than you think. People in the NFT community call this a rug, and it's a poisonous phenomenon sweeping every corner of the space. Almost every day, a new NFT project pops up with large promises only to completely scam collectors out of their money. If this happened in the stock market, owners would go to jail for decades. But because it's crypto, there is essentially no regulations and it's not even illegal to do this, just unethical. The current big data mining companies like Facebook and TikTok have sprung up a wave of interest of people trying to keep their identity secret and keep their data to themselves. And I really don't blame people for trying to keep their data from being sold. And cryptocurrency plays into this secrecy perfectly and allows people to transfer assets across the world seamlessly, completely anonymous. When your identity is a secret, this is what we call an undoxed person. And with this wave of undoxed people entering the space, people essentially are buying art off freelancing websites like Fever, hyping up the project through influencers, selling out the project, and then running away with people's money. The owners of these rug pulls close their Twitter accounts, close the Discord, and never log into their accounts again. And because their identity doesn't have to be revealed to do this, they run this scam over and over and over again. In today's NFT landscape, about 90 to 95% of the projects sprouting up are promising large, lavish games, roadmaps, or false value in the future with plans to never ever deliver on their project and slowly phase the project out over time. This, my friends, is what we call a soft rug, which is letting the project run for a few months, but never actually delivering. These scammers can even create a false identity for themselves, using a false name, creating a false persona, and showing a random picture of a person and claiming to be them. Giving investors the appearance of a docs team and building that initial trust. But in reality, it's all a lie. In 2021 alone, 2.8 billion was lost to these types of scams. And the problem just seems to keep getting worse and worse. NFTs are nothing like the stock market. In the stock market, the proven best strategy is buying and holding the stock for a span of 10 plus years. But in NFTs, it's rare to see someone hold a piece of art for more than three months. This is because a majority of individuals in the space are trying to make a quick profit. With NFTs, the best way to make money is by minting a project. Remember what minting is? It's when you buy the project directly from the owner, not the secondary market. Projects before mint will hand select a few thousand people to mint their project. This list is otherwise known as a whitelist and people on the whitelist are guaranteed to be allowed to buy into the project. Now the underlying problem here is to get on the whitelist, you're gonna be competing with thousands and thousands of people. Now you can always mint a small collection, but the chances of that small collection actually selling out goes down dramatically. And so do the chances of you making your money back. So to really make the money you hear about on the internet, you'll have to try to get on these whitelist spots for the bigger hyped up projects. And if this is the case, the competition to mint will be fierce. The discords for these projects fill up within days and are packed with 80 to 250,000 people competing for maybe a few thousand whitelist spots. The project founder's main incentive when picking people for their whitelist is to ensure they have a strong community and a common tactic they use to give away whitelist spots is to use a grinding approach, making people level up based on the number of messages they send in the Discord every day. People spend hours, like it's a full-time job, just trying to potentially have the chance to buy this NFT for $300 to $800. Yes, you've heard that right. A whitelist spot does not mean you get the NFT for free. It simply means you are allowed to buy the NFT for a price set by the founders. For the average person, 
They don't have all day to spend having meaningless conversations in these discords. It's gotten so bad that people are starting to hire offshore employees just to grind in these discord channels all day. And this still doesn't guarantee them a whitelist spot. Computer generated bots also flood the community with pre-designed scripts so put together that it's impossible to tell the difference between bots and people. So the average person essentially gets flooded out of the whitelist process and never gets the chance to actually mint good projects, forcing them to purchase an NFT in the secondary market with the pricing of the project already spiked up in value by two, five, 10 X sometimes, depending on the project. This is a problem because if you're not an NFT influencer, or maybe you're just simply the average investor, you won't get a chance to mint projects that are good. And in the end, you must enter the secondary market to get into the projects you want to get into, which increases the chance of you losing your investment. Currently, more and more people are entering the NFT market and with more people than ever in the space, whitelist spots are going to be rarer than ever. So rare that these whitelist spots are now being pawned off for monetary value. This whitelist design has an unintentional effect of excluding new users in the NFT space from minting good projects and flooding the pockets of influencers or exploiters who get these whitelist spots every time for a simple retweet on their Twitter or if they have a massive army of Discord computer bots. If you joined NFT Twitter or simply listened to the news revolved around this space, you would think that every person in NFTs are raking in thousands of dollars in profits from trading. Gurus and influencers are continuously coming out and talking about how much money they make from NFTs on certain trades or simple mints. But this is furthest from the truth. It's simply a tactic used to sell a dream to people. The same dream that fake gurus and influencers sell to the masses. And it's this dream of making money online or simply escaping the rat race. And this dream is the main funnel bringing people into the industry. In 2021 alone, 26.9 billion USD has been infused into the NFT industry, showing the sheer number of people joining the space with the main intention to make more money. And with a fake dream being sold to everyone, it generally leads to more people investing with more money than they can bear to lose. Now, I'm not saying that it's impossible to make money in NFTs, but the dark side here is that millions of people are getting false perceptions of the industry, making them pour money into the industry to only lose majority of their investments. NFTs are an extremely risky asset, as you can both lose money in the depreciation of the cryptocurrency you're trading in, or you can lose on the actual price of the NFT itself. Now, there can be a slight edge if you're highly skilled in trading NFTs, but for 99% of people trading NFTs, it's exactly like gambling. Although there are some serious underlying problems within the NFT space right now, and it may seem that I'm against NFTs, but this is furthest from the truth. I'm still very positive and hopeful for the technology overall. NFTs, similarly to the internet, have serious potential to disrupt any industry. This technology is only in its infancy, and once more professionals enter the space, we're going to see many different industries benefit. But the dark side of NFTs seem to be overshadowing the innovations. And the successful, legal, repeated scams are happening more and more often and needs to be stopped. I really think that NFTs would benefit from some sort of regulation to make it safer for consumers and gut the scam cycle from happening over and over again. The pre-reveal system realistically should be scrapped as NFT collectors should have a good idea of what they're buying into instead of project owners deciding to show the community a few pre-selected rare NFTs as a sales tactic. With more regulations, it would encourage new people to enter the market and liquidity in the market would not be maliciously sucked out by a few bad apples. Regardless of the dark side of NFTs, I still see massive potential in this technology to change the world as we know it. So stay vigilant Always do your own research and be careful when you're investing in NFTs. If you guys like content like this, I have massive plans for the channel. So make sure you guys subscribe. It makes it all worth it for me. Thanks and stay hungry.